Like Zeus's thunderclouds, let's get ready to rumble. Today we're taking a look at the most powerful Greek gods you might not have heard of, the ones only the true connoisseurs will know. Number 20. Iris Most people tend to picture Hermes when you think of the messenger of the gods, and that's fair. The master of speed and looking cool in winged shoes is practically the Amazon Prime of Olympus. But there's actually another messenger god, or rather goddess, Iris, who also serves as the goddess of the rainbow and acts as a messenger in several texts including the Iliad. In the work of Hesiod, she also has the solemn responsibility of carrying water from the river Styx to deliver whenever a god wanted to take an oath. Still, in spite of her responsibilities and how cool rainbows are, she mostly acts as a helper of other gods, so she comes in at the bottom of this ranking. But Iris is just a solo act. How about a divine tag team? Number 19. The Horai The Horai are the goddesses of the seasons and portions of time or the hours. That might not sound especially powerful, but their responsibilities in the myths include guarding the gates of Olympus, you know, the home to all those more powerful gods. They're also responsible for watching over the constellations and the conditions required for good farming on Earth. The three sisters are Eunomia, good order and good pasture, Irene, peace and spring, and Diki, justice. Three may beat the power of one, but can they beat the power of the sun? Number 18. Helios Helios is the god of the sun, who drives a chariot from east to west across the sky. Hey, wait a minute, that sounds like Apollo's whole deal. Yeah, well, Helios did it first. Apollo was originally associated with more purity and radiance than with the sun itself, but over time he became associated with the sun as well. But Helios did it first, and he earned his spot on the list. He's the original Greek sun god. Speaking of which, you can't have the sun without the moon, which brings us to… Number 17. Selene Selene is the goddess of the moon and sister to Helios. Like her brother, she also drives a chariot across the sky, pulled by winged horses. The light of the moon is, depending on the story, a crown on her head or the folds of her shiny cloak. Other Greek goddesses are associated with the moon, including Artemis, Hera, and an upcoming entry into the ranking. But Selene isn't just a moon goddess. She was represented by ancient Greek poets as the moon itself incarnate. She's not just the goddess of the moon, she's the whole damn moon all by herself. But can she beat death? Number 16. Charon Some viewers might not consider this next entry to be a god. To that we say he was the son of Erebus and Nyx, the primordial god and goddesses of darkness and night, respectively. You look at Charon in his shadowy face and you tell him he doesn't count. Charon has one of the most important and morbid jobs in all of Greek mythology. He's tasked with rowing the souls of the dead across the river Styx and Acheron, carrying them into the afterlife. Every person who dies winds up sitting in Charon's boat, and they can't get where they're going without him. If that's not a kind of incredible power, then what is? But what's a rowboat to a battleship? Number 15. Eris Maybe you associate power with a more active position or with the ability to pack a real punch, harm-wise. How about Eris, the goddess of strife, discord, and rivalry? More specifically, goddess of the strife of war. Eris is frequently depicted lurking around battlefields, enjoying the sight of human bloodshed and loss. Eris is so widely disliked by the other gods and goddesses that she is the only goddess not invited to the wedding of Peleus and Thetis. She turns up anyway, and when the other gods refuse to let her in, she decides to cause some trouble among them. She took a golden apple, inscribed to the fairest, and threw it amongst the goddesses, specifically Hera, Aphrodite, and Athena. The gift inflamed their rivalry and grew into a conflict that would end up causing the Trojan War. Eris proves that sometimes you can bring the most powerful people to their knees simply by sowing the seeds of discord. But how could hatred and strife ever stand up to the raw power of love? Number 14. Eros Not to be confused with our previous entry on the list, Eros is the god of love, passion, and fertility. If you're not sure what's so powerful about Eros, maybe hearing the name of his latter Roman counterpart will clarify it. Cupid. That's right, using a bow and arrows or a flaming torch, Eros is the one responsible for igniting love and desire in the hearts of both men and gods. When Eros falls in love with a mortal woman, Psyche, their love was so strong that they overcame Aphrodite's attempts to keep them apart. He literally beat the goddess of love, his mother, at her own game. But while Eros controls what you love, our next terrifying tag team controls what you fear. Number 13. Phobos and Deimos You may consider including two gods as one entry cheating, but Phobos and Deimos come as a set. 
Sorry, they just do. They both serve as the personification of fear, with Phobos serving as the god of panic and flight and Deimos representing terror and dread. Yes, by the way, Phobos is indeed where we get the word phobia from. The twins also sometimes represent fear of loss and are the children of Ares and Aphrodite. Their sister is Ares, and all three of them were told in the Iliad to accompany their father Ares when he sent soldiers to war. Phobos and Deimos are also described as appearing on Athena's shield, along with the face of Medusa, intended to strike terror into the hearts of Athena's enemies. If you've ever tried to reason with someone in the grip of a terrible panic, or tried to be rational in the face of irrational fear, like walking down the hall from the bathroom to your bedroom in the dark, you know just how powerful these twin forces can be. But irrational fears are one thing, what about a goddess that it's extremely rational to fear? Number 12. Enyo Speaking of war, did you know that there is a Greek goddess of war? That's right, it's not all Ares in the war zones. He's also joined by Enyo, referred to as the sister of war by Greek poet Quintus Myrnaeus. She accompanied Ares into many of his most iconic battles and was involved in the War of the Seven against Thebes as well as the Trojan War. Myths vary in terms of whether she is Ares' sister, wife, or daughter, but one thing is certain, if there is blood being shed, Enyo has a hand in it. Number 11. Guess who's next? Go ahead, try it. Yes, try your luck. If you get it wrong, then this next entry is not on your side. It's Tyche, the goddess of chance or luck. Just like fortune itself, Tyche can go a variety of ways, and it's depicted differently depending on that direction. Holding a rudder, she helps guide fate itself. With a ball, she represents the unsteadiness of fortune, which can go any way at any time. With a cornucopia, she symbolizes the gifts of fortune, abundance, and plentiful rewards that come to those blessed with good luck. As Pindar put it in his Olympian Ode 12, for your hand steers the ships of the ocean on their flying course, and rules on land the march of savage wars, and the assemblies of wise counselors. But if your luck is even worse, it might not be Tyche's doing, but someone a whole hell of a lot more formidable. Number 10. Nemesis Maybe you don't believe fortune is random. Maybe you believe that a person reaps what they sow, and what goes around comes around. Let us introduce to you Nemesis, the goddess who specializes in just desserts. Nemesis doles out divine punishment, particularly when it comes to hubris, extreme, dangerous pride, or arrogance. In the myth of Echo and Narcissus, she's the one who punishes Narcissus for his vanity, luring him to a pool where he becomes so entranced by his own reflection that he eventually dies on the spot. The poet Mesomides once wrote a hymn to Nemesis, calling her Nemesis, winged balancer of life, dark-faced goddess, daughter of justice. But being able to kill is one thing. What about the divine power to save? Number 9. Asclepius As the son of Apollo and a mortal princess, Asclepius may not be considered a god by some Greek mythology enthusiasts, but he was good enough to be the patron god of the Asclepiades, an ancient order of doctors. As that might imply, Asclepius was the god of medicine and doctors. He was so mighty even as a mere demigod that he gained the ability to bring the dead back to life. His skills were so great that they violated the natural order, and Zeus struck him down with a thunderbolt. Yes, he was killed by Zeus and then placed into the stars as the constellation of Fucus. But his ability to revive the dead and accomplish something that scared the hell out of the king of the gods earns him a spot on this list. But death and rebirth are only two fates of many. What about the beings who can see them all? Number 8. The Fates When it comes to every mortal's destiny, the length of their life, and the exact moment of their death, there are three famous sisters who hold all the cards. Actually, they hold a golden thread and a pair of scissors. The Fates, the daughters of Nyx and either Zeus or Themis, are a package deal. Clotho, the spinner, who spins the thread of life. Lachesis, the measurer, who determines how long each thread or lifespan will be. And Atropos, the unbending inflexible, who cuts the thread when it's time for someone to die. The rule of the fates is so ironclad that the other gods do not dare interfere when they decide someone's time is up. That applies to their pet mortals and their own mortal sons and daughters too. In a few myths, some of the gods test this, such as Apollo who got around their verdict on a mortal by getting them drunk enough to change their minds. But aside from plying them with booze, the gods know not to cross these three sisters. You can try all you want, but you just can't fight fate. But would you be any more capable of fighting our next godly contestant? Number 7. Pan 
Pan is one of the less intimidating gods when it comes to appearances. He's just a friendly little goat man with a flute after all. And it's true that while a lot of the other gods spend their time starting wars and cheating on Hera over and over and over and over looking at you Zeus, Pan tends to stick to his domain in the fields, forests, and pastures, frolicking with nymphs and playing music. But don't underestimate him. Pan is said to have a voice so fearsome that he frightened the titans during their battle with the gods. He's also said to be gifted in the art of prophecy, so much so that he taught Apollo himself how to define the future. Mostly, he just prefers to party and startle lost travelers by suddenly appearing to them. But he's a goat god with hidden depths. Pan may be a goat, but can our next contestant claim the title of the goat? Number 6. Thanatos Because Hades is the god of the underworld, people tend to assume that that makes him the god of death. But those people are sorely mistaken. The Greek god of death is actually Thanatos, considered to be the personification of death itself. Naturally, this makes him pretty unpopular among both mortals and gods. But that doesn't matter. Whether they like him or not, death is a constant, here to stay. As Hesiod put it in Theogony, if he should touch a man, that man is his. And even to the gods who are immortal, death is an enemy. However, despite his name bearing a striking similarity to a later powerful being, Thanatos sadly does not have his own infinity gauntlet. Our next contestant, however, is sure to blow you away. Number 5. Aeolus Poseidon may be the god of the sea, but there is one thing in nature that can cause the tides to turn at the drop of a hat. The wind. Enter Aeolus, the god of storms and the keeper of the winds. In the Odyssey, he passed a bag along to Odysseus that contained the storm winds, which could carry him and his men home. But when Odysseus's crew opened the bag looking for treasure, they were blown all the way back to the shore of Aeolus' home. It should be mentioned that in some writings, Aeolus is not considered a god at all, but instead a mortal who is appointed as the divine keeper of the winds. In others, such as the work of Stesichorus, he is called the cousin of Iris and is therefore a god. Either way, that guy keeps a violent storm locked away and can release it whenever he wants. That's power, mortal or not. But could the power of wind help anyone escape their doom? Number 4. Moros The gods have accomplished a lot of impossible things in their various myths. They've created storms, transformed people into animals, even cheated death. But there is one thing that can't be escaped by the certainty of its very nature, and that is doom. Doom just so happens to be the purview of Moros, the son of Nyx and the god that personifies impending doom. He can even give mortals the ability to foresee their death though there is nothing they can do to change it. Even Zeus can't defy a decree from Moros. In the Greek tragedy Prometheus Bound, Moros is described as the all-destroying god who even in the realm of death does not set his victim free. Bleak. Speaking of inevitable. Number 3. Erebus Erebus is the primordial god of darkness, one of the first beings to ever exist. He was the father of Himera, goddess of the day. After the gods created the earth, Erebus finished the underworld filling any empty space there with dark mists. He is so deeply associated with the underworld that his name is used to refer to the place where the spirits of the dead pass after leaving their bodies behind. He may have faded out of relevance, but Hades would not have his kingdom of death if it weren't for Erebus laying the underground work. But could this feisty divine emo hold a candle to the original goddess of Goths? Number 2. Hecate Zeus rules the skies, Poseidon rules the seas, Hades rules the underworld, but there is one goddess whose domain is all three realms, the sky, the earth, and the underworld, Hecate. The goddess of witchcraft, necromancy, boundaries, and gateways, Hecate is associated with the moon and night sky, borders, city walls, crossroads on earth, and ghosts, and passage into the underworld. She was the only titan who maintained her power under the rule of Zeus, and she was honored and respected by all gods even as they took their place on Olympus. She assisted the gods in the war against the giants, and she killed Cleitius, the giant and son of Gaia, in battle. She was also known for being able to send demons and evil spirits up to earth from the underworld and to dwell among the spirits of the dead, the living, and the gods in equal measure. What can't she do? Well, things this next contestant can. Number 1. Chaos Some descriptions consider it a goddess, others a god, and most say neither. As Aristophanes put it, at the beginning, there was only chaos, night, dark Erebus, and deep Tartarus. Earth, the air, and heaven had no existence. Firstly, black-winged night laid a germless egg in the bosom of the infinite deep Erebus. 
and from this, after the revolution of long ages, sprang graceful Eros with his glittering golden wings. Swift as the whirlwinds of the tempest, he mated in deep Tartarus with dark chaos winged like himself, and thus hatched forth our race, which was the first to see the light. Chaos was the void before everything, the place from which all else sprang forth. Some early personified versions of chaos depict a goddess of the air and the birds that fly in it. She is the void, the parent of all primordial gods, and if creation is power, the most powerful entity in all of Greek mythology. After all, none of it would have happened without chaos. Now check out what Greek parties were actually like, or watch this video instead.